My name is Jonathan, and uh, Mara presented, uh, created this PowerPoint and then asked me to present because I'm really passionate about recycling as well. So we're going to talk about, um, we'll start off with just some recycling facts, some general um, tidbits about recycling itself. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll talk about CSI's recycling. Um, in case anyone doesn't know, you can bring any of your recycling items except for glass uh, and recycle here at CSI. So I've got a map of the building that'll show you where separate things can go. We'll talk about what can and can't be recycled and a couple other tips uh, as far as that goes. So um, just to start off with some facts, I won't read every single one of these. Um, you can take a look at these if you really want to. Um, but this second one here is really cool. Just for the Sunday newspapers, every week 500,000 trees have to be cut down to produce that paper. And so if you take that times 52 weeks in a year, that's 26 million trees just for the Sunday paper. Um, if you look at the full week of newspapers, um, that comes out to 250 million trees every year which are being cut down. Uh, so the more paper that, paper that gets recycled, the more of the recycled material is available to print on those, um, which you know, has a, a better environmental impact. Uh, I also thought this was pretty cool. We throw away enough office paper, copy paper, to build a wall 12 feet high from Los Angeles to New York, uh, which is about 2,500 miles times 12 feet. I just thought that was incredible that you could go across the country just from the, the printer paper that we throw away. For plastic, um, we use 2.5 million plastic bottles just in America every hour, and a lot of those just get thrown away. I know that this figure is actually lower than it used to be. Um, it seems like when plastic water bottles were real popular, I think that was probably about 10 years ago, um, it had to be way more than two and a half million. Now you see a lot more people with their usable bottles, um, or like Robert's got his cup there. I know Amanda, you just got a new, yep, and, and David. So a lot more people are using those, um, but still, two and a half million bottles every hour. Um, every year we make enough plastic film to shrink wrap the entire state of Texas, which Brian Downer will tell you that's a very big state. Um, it's not the biggest, which I, I didn't know until recently. Alaska is actually the biggest state by land area, but who ever thinks about Alaska? Sorry if anyone's from Alaska. Um, and then recycling plastic saves twice as much energy as burning it in an incinerator. For metals, if you have to pick one material to recycle, aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. It's the most efficient. It's the, um, the easiest to recycle. So if you have a chip on your shoulder about recycling and you say, well, I'm not going to do all of it, I just want to do one, go for aluminum because it's also the one that we use the most. If you think about soda cans or beer cans or whatever cans you might be using. Every three months, we throw away enough aluminum to build an entire commercial fleet of uh, airplanes. Uh, some miscellaneous facts. Hershey's Kisses, you think they're not that big, they wouldn't make that much of a difference, um, but every... What is that? Every day, more than 20 million Hershey's Kisses are produced, which make 133 square miles of tin foil. If you take that times 365 days a year, that's 50,000 square feet, or excuse me, square miles, uh, which is enough to cover the state of New York. And so, I don't know about you, but I don't ever think of that as something that can be recycled. So when I'm eating my 20 or 40 Hershey's Kisses at a time, I'm just throwing them right into the trash. And so, um, a lot of people don't know, but that can be recycled. Um, currently, about 35% of households in America recycle. If that could go up to 75%, which is a pretty lofty goal, but why not if we're talking hypothetical? Um, if we could get to 75% of households in America recycling, it would be the same as taking 50 million cars off of the road as far as environmental impact, carbon footprint, fossil fuel usage, that kind of thing. And it also generates a lot of new jobs. You've got people that have to sort the recycling, people that have to transport it, people who process it and turn it into the post-consumer goods. Um, it's, so there's a lot of hidden benefits that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to recycling. Um, also, uh, with cardboard, recycling one ton of cardboard saves 46 gallons of oil, and it only takes about 75% of the energy needed to make new cardboard. Um, when I first saw that, I thought, okay, how are cardboard and oil, I mean, 
is cardboard made out of oil? Um, but what it turns out is that in order to produce cardboard, if you go in reverse um, all the way to the beginning, there's the, machine, the logging machines and equipment used to cut down the trees and then transport the raw materials to the processing plant and then all of the machinery to turn that into paper and cardboard and then transpo transport that to the end user. And so a lot of um, the oil that it takes to get something to market comes from transportation costs. Well, if you're recycling that, it's a much quicker drive from the recycling location to um, wherever it gets processed and turned into post-consumer goods and then back to the shelf. So the transportation cost is something that I know I didn't ever think of, and I bet a lot of people don't realize how much you can save on that end from recycling. So um, most of the time when you think about recycling, it's using less of our natural resources. Because we're stuck on this planet until we figure out a way to, I don't know, jump through a wormhole or something, which might not be for the next five years or so. But we only have a certain amount of natural resources here, and once they're gone, they're gone. So that was always kind of what I thought of with recycling, is just to use fewer natural resources. Um, but there's a lot of other things that, that recycling helps as well. Um, your fossil fuels, um, you know, if you're burning trash, that's polluting the ozone and the atmosphere. Um, so lots of other things that are hidden benefits of that. So I didn't make my text bigger here. So that's talking about the carbon footprint. Also think about not just where things come from, but where do they end up when you're done with them? They're going to a landfill somewhere. And once those landfills full, you know, get full up, you've got to find somewhere else to put that trash. Um, shooting garbage into space is kind of frowned upon. So, um, you know, again, we've got finite resources. We have finite space to put all of our waste. So the more that you recycle, the less you're putting into that landfill. Uh, the less you're impacting the ecosystem and the habitats and the wildlife that live near those landfills. Um, a lot of people think of recycling and they say, okay, I'm just one person. What's recycling a piece of paper here and there going to do? You know, I'm not really going to have that big of an impact. And you can think of it that way. Uh, or you can think of it like voting. No, if I don't vote in the next election, my one singular vote probably won't determine who wins. But when everybody thinks that way, and none of us vote, or none of us recycle, that has an actual measurable impact. And on the opposite side of that, if we all go and vote, or if we all go and recycle, we can have a positive benefit with the same impact. And so it's every little bit that counts. Every piece of paper that you recycle is a piece of paper that isn't in the landfill. Or every aluminum can you recycle, that's one more you know, ounce of aluminum that we don't have to harvest from underground. Um, so just think of it in tiny little bits like that, and then if you've re been recycling, um, is it Shelly? Mm -hmm. And you said you've been recycling since 1968. Mm -hmm. So over the past 47 years, I mean, think about how much of a difference just Shelly, just one person has made recycling for almost 50 years. If you start today, think about the impact you could have 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and if all 10 or 15 people in this room start today, that's huge. So don't just think of it in terms of the little bit. Think long term and, and how much of a difference you're really making. So is all paper recyclable? Um, I thought this was really clever. Mara, I don't know where you found this, but if it tears, it's recyclable. Uh, so anything that you can rip in half, printer paper, cereal boxes, um, what do you got? Junk mail, file folders, notebooks. All those can go in those blue bins underneath your desk. Um, if it's a little bit more substantial, or if you have a lot of it that's going to fill up the bin, there's other places around the building that you can take it. Um, and then also, if you have boxes, uh, just break them down into smaller so they take up less space. So we have these huge catalogs that we're getting ready to take to about literally that thick. Wow. So yeah. push them in the bin. Yeah, so um, I've got a map that we'll see on the next slide. And there is a bin specifically for computer paper, printer paper, that's separate from the big cardboard bin. Um, Lou Ann was? <laughs> Little keepsake. Um, no, that's a great point, James. That's, um, so did you know about the, the recycling options here before today? Well, I did, but 
I'm really glad you brought that up. Um, if it's, you know, colored paper or anything like that, doesn't matter, that can all be recycled. If it's a hard, a hard back, if it's wrapped in plastic, that might, we might run into some problems. I don't think we can recycle that. Might have to rip the covers off. Yeah, which then it gets into how much time do you want to invest in it versus recycling. It says here that you can do hardback books. So hardback books, yes, you can do that. If it has like a plastic wrapping around it, then you couldn't recycle. But if it's just like a hardback book or like a textbook or something like that, that can be recycled. Is that what you're talking about? If, is it like a hardback book? Okay, then yeah, that probably could be recycled. Um, and we've, we've got a list and a couple slides that talk about all the things that can and can't be put in the commingle and, and all of that. Um, the paper bins are not secure. So if you have your financial records or maybe you've um, printed off some incriminating phone records, something like that, You'll, be, you'll want to be sure and shred those, otherwise someone's going to see your bank statement or find out how you got away with the perfect crime, which, surprise, not a perfect crime anymore. Um, commingle Dumpster can accept some small cardboard stuff. We'll talk about that in a couple slides. Um, so here's the map. So right up here, uh, this is Anita's lovely little workspace uh, front door. So um, the lunchroom is right here. And if you walk out the patio around to the left, there's a green dumpster there. And that's the commingle, and that's your plastic, aluminum, tin, um, not glass, uh, but smaller cardboard boxes, stuff like that. And then just a little bit past this, um, on, on the outside corner, like building D is here, building C, there's a big blue, I think it's blue, uh, dumpster there, and that's for your computer paper, printer paper. That's the same stuff that you can put in your blue bin under your desk. It's just if you have a whole lot of it, like these binders that James is talking about, and you don't want to you know, put that under your desk, you can take that out there. And then on the opposite side of the building, the warehouse, um, you know, here's inside sales, and you come out to the warehouse. It's this very far corner. It's the northeast side, and it's that very last overhead door. Um, if you open that up, there's a, and that's for your corrugated cardboard. Um, and so just be sure to break those down, flatten them, just so they take up as little space as possible. And um, I go out there just about once a week or so, because I, I sometimes get business cards that come in boxes or you know, things like that. And you know, it's a nice excuse to get up and take a walk, you know, get out and get away from your desk. Um, but that's where your corrugated cardboard goes. All of this stuff, uh, these last few slides and the next couple slides, are in this brochure that you have sitting in front of you. So if you're feeling like you're not going to remember all of this, you've got it with you there. You can take it and, and look at it at your leisure. Um, so what can be recycled? Um, corrugated cardboard, egg cartons, paper and hardback books, which you were asking about. Um, chipboard, if you've ever bought kind of the cheap furniture from Target or Walmart that you take home and put together. Some people call it particle board or um, MDF, I think is another name for it. That can be recycled. Uh, plastic gallon jugs, aluminum, soda and beer cans, uh, phone books. Um, these are all the things that can't be so like styrofoam, gift wrap, obviously you don't want to recycle hazardous material, take your sulfuric acid elsewhere, we don't want it. Um, any type of bags, you know, your uh, fast food bags, Walmart bags, trash bags, obviously that can't be recycled. Um, any type of oil, paint cans, photographs, um, but one of the really important things to remember is that if you do have a gallon jug or if you've got some you know, canned beans and you want to recycle those cans, just always, always, always rinse them out, get rid of any type of food particles or oils or anything like that, because if that goes in the commingle, then the whole load goes to the landfill. So that green dumpster out there, even if 99% of the stuff in there is cleaned and dried plastic and aluminum and everything, if there's one can in there that has bean juice on it or food residue or anything, then the recycling company says, well, we're not going to take the time to sort that out. And they just take the whole load to the landfill, and then it's all a big waste. So that's the really important thing about the commingle is just to rinse off any and all food particles and residue. Um, that's why you'll see pizza boxes, even though that is cardboard, that oil and grease gets soaked into the cardboard and you can't rinse it out. And so those cannot be recycled. Did I put enough emphasis on that, Mara? That was Angela's point, but yes. OK. So when I see plastic, it says food grade only. And I'm just, I mean, re 
recycler. What about like these big uh, liquid tide containers and things like mm -hmm. that that we use a lot of detergent out of? Are those recyclable as long as we wash them out? I yeah, think? great question. So on the cover of this brochure, it was also the first slide here, that's a, I traced a Tide can and just got rid of the logo for legal purposes. Um, but yeah, just rinse it out real good, maybe just a couple rinses, shake it out just until the suds are pretty much gone. Um, it does list, if you open up here at the bottom of the middle page, under plastics, those are all the numbers that it'll accept. I don't know if it goes beyond seven, but one through seven type plastics can be recycled. And those are the little numbers if you've ever looked on the bottom of a plastic container. Exactly. Yep. So they're, I don't know what they mean. I think it's just different compositions of plastic and they're, they have different intended uses. Mara's shaking her head yes. The way that they break down also, that kind of gives them a hint. That's why plastic bags can't go in there. They break down so much differently than a soda bottle or okay. down in the middle. So that's why your plastic bags and things can't be recycled. I guess they're a certain type of plastic that doesn't recycle easily. But anything one through seven, go ahead and bring it in and just put it in that commingle. But like Lillian was asking, just be sure and rinse it out real good. So not just food particles, but soap residue or any kind of chemicals or anything like that. Good question. So here are a couple of examples. Let's go back to, I don't know, third, fourth grade um, and just do some class exercises. So out of these four items, which of them can be recycled? All right, go Robert. You don't get to answer the next one. <laughs> this is the last slide. So which ones out of these could be recycled? One and four. That's right, cardboard box and the plastic cup. Does anybody have any other questions? Did I go too fast? I have a question. Amanda? What about like, um, you said no bags. What about like a brown paper bag like for mom and Jean? Yes, absolutely. And that would go in with your printer paper, copier paper, and the blue bins, since it's not a corrugated cardboard. Even though it's brown, yes, Tim. So color is not important. It's just, if it's like paper that you can rip apart, then yeah, it would go in the blue bins. Kurt? I noticed your plastic bottles had the lids on them. the lids? Yeah. Is that, so there's a reason you're asking. Have you, have you heard before that lids are not acceptable? Mara? We have called our, um, the people that have our compostable dumpster and asked them what can and can't, and we had brought up that lid situation, and they said that they don't prefer them, but they can still take them. So in case you're watching the video, if you couldn't hear Mara, she said that we've called our recycling provider, and they say they don't prefer the lids, but that they can take them. So if that's a deciding factor for you, if taking off the lids is going to keep you from recycling, then go ahead and leave them on and recycle better to do that than to just not do it at all. I know that with um, a lot of the plastic bottles with the lids, the lids are made out of a different density, so either more dense or less dense plastic. So then they shred it all up in a big shredder, and then they actually just put it in a big vat of water, and I think the lids float to the top, and then the plastic from the bottle sinks to the bottom, and that's how they can sort it all out really quick. So I think it's just one extra step for them, which is why they prefer not to but they're still capable of doing that. Great questions. Anyone else? What is it about a hanging file folder that makes it unacceptable? I think it's probably the metal tabs that um, allow it to hang in place. Do you know about that? I know. I just know that, that one specific thing that they were allowed to take. Yeah. Yeah, but... You pull the metal part out. Yeah, everyone's saying you can pull those metal parts out, and so it is one extra step, but then that whole file can be recycled aside from the metal tabs. Okay. Amanda was asking me earlier today if staples can be recycled, if you've got stapled paper. I don't, I don't know. I don't assume that they're going to throw it away if they're staples because so much paper is stapled. Um, so Amanda was at her desk and she was like trying to pry apart the staple and pull it out. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do, I'll just rip off that corner of paper and I'll throw away the tiny little corner of paper, which is not that bad, but then the rest can be recycled. And so it's a lot quicker and easier than trying to pull out the staple itself. Most recycling centers have kind of magnets. Oh, do they? So everybody, I don't know if you heard, Tim said most recycle centers have high-powered magnets, and those will pull out 
the staples. I didn't know that. It's, but it's like, I'm sure that it's like the cats. They'd prefer it if you didn't have them in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, just ripping off the corner is a lot quicker way to do it. <laughs> Kurt. I got a question here. Yeah. You said you could recycle the Hershey wrappers. Mm -hmm. Well, at the well, low time, they say no aluminum foil. Yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't know the difference between aluminum foil and Hershey wrappers. Mara, you want to weigh in on this? Okay, so it sounds like so the question Kurt asked, he said that at the city recycling, they have signs that say no aluminum foil. Um, our provider at CSI has different rules from the city, so they will accept aluminum foil. Another thing that got brought up, I think I mentioned it earlier, but while the city does have glass recycling, our provider does not accept glass in any of the bins. So um, if, you want to if you want to recycle your glass bottles or anything, you'll have to take it to one of the city locations. Um, off the top of my head, there's one off the corner of Battlefield and Lone Pine. So there's a, is that Fuddruckers on that corner? And there's a subway and a gas station. Back behind that on Lone Pine is one. Uh, Luann, you said you go to the one on Chestnut and Broadway? Is it Broadway? And it's just north of Chestnut. You go on Broadway a couple blocks, and it's kind of tucked back. Yeah, it's tucked back in there, and it's not the greatest part to go. Yes, it's, lock your door. Just it's lock not your the door. greatest location. <laughs> um, are there any more in town? I, f I feel like there's one more. Where'd you say you go? Out west. Out west? Mm -hmm. OK. Have, it for Habitat for Humanity does. And is that, that's over by uh, Nathaniel Green Park, right? At the ReStore? And so that... By Hammonds Field? Yeah. Oh yeah, that place kind of behind uh, Jordan Valley Park. I think um, Angela Moeller's son, I was talking to her, he'll because uh, I've got a water heater that I've got to get rid of, and I think he takes his metal there and they will pay you for um, big hunks of metal, so that's that's another good. Yeah, the one place the Habitat Humanity Restore, in case anyone doesn't know, that's on Scenic, which is on the west side of town. If you go on Sunshine past Kansas Expressway, and then take a left on Scenic, it's right by Nathaniel Green Park. Um, what was that, Mike? Across the street, across from Horton Smith Golf Course. From Horton Smith Golf Course, across the street from there. So, are those all the recycling centers in town? I Google, yeah. Yeah, you can always Google if you're not sure, but um, the Lone Pine one and then the Chestnut and Broadway are probably the two. Um, and it, I always wish that there would be another one kind of in the center of town, or they're, they're not the most convenient locations, but if you're on that side of town, you know, just load up your car. They've also got yard waste, too, so if you've got big bags of leaves in the fall, you can take those and... You can't recycle, the, or you can't put the bags in there, but just rip them open and put your leaves in there. I've done that a few times. Any other questions? Robert? I would add something that may or may not be uh, everybody's aware of. <coughs> you're talking about all the recycling stuff. Uh, at least once a year, I think now, now twice a year, the Better Business Bureau has a Saturday where you can come by the Great Southern facility there uh, on Glenstone, mm -hmm. just right there before St. Louis Street. Okay. If you've got any financial documents, any CDs that have, you know, information on them, stuff like that, you can take them there. They usually will promote it, and then it'll be on their website, too. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to pull staples. You don't have to pull plastic. They just, they have these big, huge recycling trucks that are right there. Mm -hmm. You dump them into it like a garbage dump, and they just throw them right in there. So, so that's Great Southern Bank, and that's on Glenstone and St. Louis, kind of that area? Just south of St. Louis on the east side. Okay, and so that's, that's a big secure document, recycling, CDs, stuff like Any that. Any kind of secure. Any kind of secure, anything. And how often does that happen? I, I know once a year, and I think they're now doing it twice a year. 
Okay, once or twice a year, and so they advertise go, that yeah. or look on their website. The radio, but you can go on their website. Okay, that's good to know. Do you have a question? Okay, Kurt. Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah. There is one over off the. I want to say Prince Lane in Chestnut as well. There's TV, big yeah. TV. Yeah. Right behind okay. the post office there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, be sure if you take computer stuff, you pull your hard drive out and then yeah. take that to the Better Business Bureau. That's a good point because that can have private stuff on it. But yeah. what? <coughs> oh yeah. So Kurt said that a recycling program for electronics, computers, anything like that. And who'd you say does that, or where's that located? Mike says it's moved from Burke. Oh. It used to be at National Division, but it's no longer there. I don't know where they've moved to. Okay, so that's something to I Google. The one on, Chestnut. Right. on Chestnut. On Chestnut. And Prince Lane. And Prince Lane. Right behind the post office there. Right behind the post office on Chestnut. I'm actually taking stuff there. Okay, so that's something uh, if you've got electronics to get rid of. And Robert made the good point, if you're going to do that, be sure to take your hard drive out of the computer and then take that to the secure disposal at Great Southern Bank. They also have a great program right after Christmas if you have bad lights, Christmas lights, which a lot of us usually do, you can take your Christmas lights there too. Christmas lights, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. See, there's all these things that I never think of can be recycled from Hershey's Kisses to uh, Christmas lights and so... There's a really great documentary I just thought of, um, and it's on Netflix, um, Instant Q, if you have that. It's called Manufactured Landscapes, and it's, it's a beautifully shot film. It was shot by a professional photographer, and so just visually, it's really beautiful to watch. The music, the soundtrack, and everything is really great, um, but uh, Manufactured Landscapes, and it shows all of the effects of human waste production, um, from our landfills to... Um, electronic stuff that gets thrown away and it's it's kind of depressing but in a good way it's very sobering it it really helped me to connect with wow when I'm throwing something away this is where it's actually going and so um, th what made me think of it was when Kurt talked about the electronics they show this field outside of a city in China where the US sends a lot of its electronic waste and they're burning all of this you know the motherboards in your computer are made out of silicone or sil silicon, silicon, I don't know if it's the same thing, but uh, they're burning this, you know, those green motherboards you think of, and the smoke over the city is just so oppressive. I mean, you can, China is smoggy enough as it is, but it's even worse in this town, and they say that you can smell the burning silicon from 20 or 30 miles away, and I mean, it's, it's literally like a football field of just piles and piles of old computers and monitors and hard drives and it's really disgusting and um, manufactured landscapes it's a really great I don't have any personal interest I'm not getting any kickbacks from this but it's a really great documentary and really visually enjoyable to watch so I'd highly recommend that if you want to learn more about any of this I don't know if it's on YouTube or not um, I'll look into that and then I'll send the link to maybe Mara and she can distribute it out. Um, and then also on Netflix Instant if you have that. Okay. David, you look like you might have a question. Do you want to think of one real quick while I've got you on the spotlight? <laughs> oh, these questions are great. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, sure. Who changes the oil in their vehicle? Okay. That was my question. That was David's question. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mara, for getting it out of him. Yep, you can take. So for all our viewers at home, Mara was saying if you change the oil in your own car, that black dirty oil you end up with, that can be uh, spun out and it spins out all the dirt and then reused. So save that and take it into O'Reilly or Walmart or you know any kind of auto parts store and they'll take care of that for you. She said she knows someone that 
pours it into a can and just throws it away in the trash, which is awful, awful, awful. Used to. Used to. <laughs> you made sure they didn't do that anymore, right? I guilt tripped them pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> pretty effective. Paint cans was on the list of things that can't be recycled here at CSI. I'm sure you could Google it, and there's somewhere in town that would take those. Kurt? The latex, you take the lid off, and if you put sawdust in it, you make it solidify. Or cat or cat or cat and then it can pull the landfill. And then it can't go in the landfill. Then you can take it. Because it's trash. If it's oil based, you have to call the CU, and they've got a place they'll collect it. Okay. You have to make an appointment. Right. It's hard to get, the, get up on the phone. It's hard to get on the phone. It's almost like they don't want you to do it. Yeah. I can't remember where it's at, but there's a place that is east of Chestnut Expressway. Before you get to uh, like uh, where the overpass is at for the rail, it's uh -huh. east of there. Back in there, they'll take hazardous stuff. Yeah, but I think it's the same okay. place. It's it's not a drop in. You can't drop in. Hmm. Make it, yeah, make it a so. Tell them what you're bringing to. Okay. That way you don't show them something they don't So Luann's question was, she's got some paint cans in her garage that have a little bit of paint left in them. What can you do with those? Um, paint cans are on the list of things that we can't recycle here. Uh, Kurt and Shelley, though, they said if it's latex paint, then you can um, put some sawdust in there, and that'll kind of soak up the paint and, and make kind of a slush type material. That can go in your trash can and go to the landfill. But if it's oil-based paint, you've got to call city utilities, which we all know is a painful experience because you're probably going to be on hold for a little bit. Uh, make an appointment, and then they have a special place to drop off your oil-based paint, um, which is kind of a pain in the neck. It's, it's frustrating that they don't make it easier for you because here you're trying to do the right thing for the environment, and you know it'd be nice if it was a simple process, but it's not the kind of thing that you can just go and drop off anytime you want. You have to make an appointment. Um, and Robert, you said, is it the same place that Robert was talking yeah, about? Yeah, Okay. Household hazardous waste. <coughs> Household hazardous waste. So if you have some oil-based paint left in some cans and you want to get rid of it, just Google household hazardous waste in Springfield, Missouri, and that should probably give you all the information you need. Mike. That's probably what I need to do to answer my next question. But uh, what about the compact fluorescent uh, lamps, the new curly the Best thing to do with those is uh, the, the compact fluorescent lamps, the curly lamps or, or twisty lamps. Find a nice big brick wall and just go to town. Get some stress out. I, that was a joke. Don't actually do that. There is a small amount of mercury in those. Okay, so there's some mercury in those. Kurt? Lowe's. Lowe's. Right at the entrance. They take batteries there and light bulbs. So the curly, the curly bulbs. Mike says there's mercury in them, and, and the answer is take them to Lowe's. They've got a, a bin for them right in front of the door. Also, they'll take batteries, old things like that. And we have battery recycling here at CSI. There's a bin in the lunchroom. Uh, that first door on the office side you walk in, there's a big bin there where you can put old batteries. Robert, you were going to say something? Yeah. Tie it up and you drop it in the slot. Okay. Speaking of plastic bags, if you do want to recycle your, your old Target bags or Walmart bags, you know, those plastic bags you see everywhere, we don't take them here, but I know Target at least, right, in fr right inside the front door of Target, they have a big bin where you can stuff those in and they recycle those. Walmart, does Walmart has them as well, price so cutter, price cutter. Yeah, most of the grocery stores there, the mm -hmm. stores are all Okay, so those plastic bags. And those plastic bags, I've heard from so many people, they are the absolute worst thing in the landfill because the wind picks them up and they don't just sit in the landfill, they fly off and either get stuck in the fence and someone has the terrible job of walking the fence and pulling them out, I imagine, or they go over the fence and they get out and then they're like murdering ducks and, you know, dr drowning fish, which I don't know how it's possible, but... <laughs> or crashing the CSI plane when it gets stuck in the propeller. You know, so the plastic bags are awful, so take them to Target or Walmart or whatever and, and put them in those, in those bins. It's kind of like that plastic bottle commercial of he wants to be by the beach. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's a cute little commercial, but it's so, I mean, 
plastic bottle that shows you rolling down the sidewalk and then down the highway and then <laughs> going through the forest and then someone finally picks him up and puts him in a recycle bin and he ends up being made into a park bench that's by the beach. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Who's advertising that? Or? It's, it's a plastic recycling. Oh, okay. It's a recycling commercial. Good for them. Yeah. That's a cool commercial. Any other questions? Or We haven't had just questions. We've had lots of good tips from people, stuff that I didn't know. Anything else? We've got a good... One thing back on the TVs and the computers. Mm -hmm. There were some places that I took things to, and it's been like, it's not every day I take something like a TV or a computer, but it seems like some places might charge like 5 or $10. Yeah. Or 20 yeah. it's it's about 20 $0.20, 25 cents for yeah. <laughs> Okay. So James just said that recycling your electronics, TVs, computers, and stuff, it might cost 5, 10, 20 bucks. So be prepared for that. Um, the CRT monitors? Okay, so that's just the CRT. So are newer electronics free to recycle then? Okay, a lot of them. Okay. Okay, so not everything electronic costs money to recycle, but just maybe call ahead and, and ask if, it, if you should bring some cash with you.